Forest rangers and campers, what are your unexplainable and downright creepy stories, part 5? Please subscribe and like to show us your appreciation. Account 1. I work at a summer camp taking kids on canoe trios for a few days at national parks. One night after setting up campsite and quenching the fire I was doing last check of the campsite, I looked at the lake and saw this lone man paddling a canoe. I thought it was pretty strange, but it's not out of the ordinary. The only weird thing being that he was alone. He waved, so being the polite Canadian I am, I waved back, went to bed in the staff tent, and everything was normal. I had a bit of trouble sleeping that night, so I decided to go stargazing. As that usually calms me down, I exit the tent and see this man on our campsite, looking through our tarps and bags, for what I don't know. Maybe drugs or food, but that's not important. This stranger is by the campers I am responsible for. We make eye contact and this guy stands up. He is tall as all hell and I am quite short, so I quickly grab the first thing I can think of. A can of bear mace. This stuff is meant to like kill a charging bear, so I hold it ready to spray and tell him to GTFO of my campsite. We doesn't really speak just like, oh, I didn't see you guys. When he is leaving, I immediately wake up the other staff and we make sure he leaves. We use our sat phone to call park rangers with our position, the guy's characteristics, and tell them the story. Without a doubt, the scariest moment I had won the job, I've learned not to fear animals, as for the most part, they are predictable, dumb, and not malicious. But people, on the other hand, the scariest and most dangerous thing to encounter out in the wilderness is a person. Account 2. Of course, not a range, but avid camper. We were camping along the Sunshine Coast in lower mainland British Columbia. It was the off-season, so not too many campers in the area, and we were in some beautiful land, lush jungle, like forested areas right beside the ocean. 5 a.m. in the morning, right before dusk, right behind our tent, we were camping by literally no other people I hear. Ho! Eh! Whoa! Eh. As loud as can be, I woke the fuck up real quick and asked my husband if he heard that and what he thought that was. He says, Do you want me to be honest with you? Uh, yes. I think it was a Sasquatch, and I'm like, No way. There's just no way. I started thinking about all the animals in the area and different calls they would make, and I'm a pretty avid camper and live in the country, so I do recognize calls of different animals. Cougar, bear, no, nope, owl, nope. I didn't go to sleep and kept the knife in my hand for another hour before the sun came up while I was on my phone googling what Sasquatch sounds like. I know there's a ton of conspiracy around this, but we did find a recording of a supposed Sasquatch that sounded similar to what we heard. Can't find it now. I'll keep looking. We went into town later that day and told a local and he's like, yeah, lots of sightings around here. The natives even have totems dedicated to them. Well, shit. Account 3. Not a ranger. Last year I went camping early springtime with some people at a pretty remote place. Wadigans National Park. There wasn't many people around and it was a really nice area. Two days into our camping trip, one of my friend's camp chair broke and we went through all our stuff looking for cable ties. We searched tents and the cars, but we had no cable ties. So we just left it. That night, I woke to my tent shaking slightly, so I woke up my boyfriend next to me. We opened the tent, and it was one of my friends. My friend was in panic, saying he couldn't breathe, that something was choking him. So we shot up with a torch, and shinning it on his neck, we found two black cable ties tied around his neck. They were tight enough for it to be cutting off some of his airway. After we were able to cut off the cable ties, we went back to sleep. We did not sleep easily that night. The next morning, we asked my friend about it, like if anything in his tent seemed out of the ordinary. He said when he woke up that night, his tent was open. Account 4. I'm not a ranger, but I did used to live near a national forest, and when I was in high school, I had my mom drive me into the woods so I could take some photos on a trail for a photography assignment. She waited in the car, and I headed down the trail, saying I wouldn't be long. It's actually really pretty and it leads down to a river, and you can walk along the edge as it turns around a bend. As I was walking, I distinctly remember feeling like I was suddenly in danger, and like something was watching me. I was wearing an orange raincoat, so I was pretty visible. 
I didn't have my glasses on, but as I looked over the river to the other side of the bank, I saw something really tall and gray making its way through the trees, toward the river. I have never been so scared. I went into survival mode and booked it back up the trail to my mom's car where I told her what happened. It's still one of the freakiest things I've ever experienced. Wish I got a photo, but I was a 16-year-old, 90LB, girl and was freaked the fuck out. Account 5. So we're at this camper near the Dover Lights in Arkansas. It's not the fanciest campsite, but we managed to find this guy that spent a lot of time out there, as much as legally allowed, while also working, and apparently making a lot of cash, so he just vacations in the woods half the year. The guy offers to let my friend watch the place while he goes to visit his son. My friend automatically invites me and some other people to come hang out and we spend a few days there drinking, smoking, fishing, and fucking around. All in all, pretty okay. Until my female friend gets super drunk and barges outside in the middle of the night, buck naked to eat beans by the handful out of a cold pot. As someone who admires cleanliness, I follow her out and try to make sure she doesn't hurt herself while everyone else just laughs. So there she is covered in beans, and I'm trying to convince her to settle down and clean herself off with a towel when suddenly her head shoots up like a deer in headlights. She just glares at the trees around us. We're alone, and it's pitch black, before literally growling and then sprinting into the woods. I have no fucking idea what to do. I've completely lost sight of her, and she's naked in the woods by herself. A few failed attempts to call out to her, and I do the stupidest thing I could have done by following her. About five meters into complete darkness, I look down and see a faint light from someone's phone. Picking it up, I see it's in camera mode, and there are pictures of us, very recent pictures, all in creepy night vision mode, with some looking like they were taken from the window of the camper, and the last one is of my friend running directly towards the camera, realizing what happened, I delete the pictures and drop the phone on a rock, crushing the screen with my foot. Still unable to find her and freaking out, I double back to the camper for help, only to find her still very drunk in a lawn chair naked. Carrying her back inside, I let her BF towel her off and they both pass out spooning on the bottom bunk. I never told them what really happened and she didn't remember in the morning. But I did lock the door and wake up every hour just to keep an eye on things. Account 6. I'm not a ranger, but I do have a story about the woods out behind my house. I've only ever lived one place in my whole life. I lived with my family up on a mountain in rural Alabama. Like, really rural. Around our house, you could walk two or three miles in any direction and not find any sign of civilization except for the road leading up to our house. Just trees, leaves, and pine straw. So just a three-mile radius of private woodland. Anyway, one night when I was probably about 15 or 16, I had a lady friend at my house who I desperately wanted to impress, so I decided it would be cool to go walk out to my favorite spot in the woods. In hindsight, I know I shouldn't have done it, but the spot was my ace in the whole eight. It was super romantic, fireflies and the sound of a small stream the whole shebang. She seemed tentative at first because she was smart, but ultimately caved to the thought of adventure. So we start walking down the path I had cut out. I've got my lantern because I couldn't find the flashlight, so I couldn't really see too far out in front of me, but it was enough to see the path. So it's about a 10 or 15 minute walk, and about halfway through there was this kind of distant weird buzzing sound. It was hardly loud enough to interrupt our talking, but it was definitely there whenever there was a break in talking. At first, I really didn't think much of it. The woods can be a really loud place at night with all the bugs and it was getting to be spring, so I pretty much ignored it. Then after a bit of walking, it was definitely getting to be more and more pronounced. Eventually, my friend asked me if I heard it too, and after I confirmed it, she was adamant about turning around and just going back. I agreed just to make her comfortable. But as we were going back, the noise just kept getting louder. And eventually, as we were almost back, it was clear what the noise was. The sound of someone playing a harmonica had been gaining on us in the dark the whole way. By the end of it, we were running pretty much full speed out of the woods across the yard and straight into the house. We went up to one of the windows facing the yard, hit the light and cracked the windowsill to listen. It was still out there playing. It's harmonica, 
and we listen to it pass the house and fade into the pines, by far the most surreal, horrifying experience of my life, probably my most cherished memory too, because that girl ended up being the one that got away. Account 7. I am a native Alaskan who grew up in the sticks. Once I was out hunting with an uncle, well, I was there anyways. I was eight at the time. We had been trying to find a small moose for quite some time that we'd seen take off into the forest across a field. Everything seemed normal, except that the area was very quiet. Then again, we're two humans walking about, so we figured maybe the wildlife was just being cautious. Well, eventually we caught up to it at another clearing, and my uncle decided to take a shot as it was getting later, and we needed to get it skinned, gutted, and butchered before the sun went down. He hit it in the heart and it only managed to stumble maybe another 60 feet to the edge of the forest. I complimented his shot, and we grabbed our gear and walked over. Now before I tell you this next part, keep in mind that moose are weighed in the thousands of pounds, generally. We're getting closer, and my uncle can't see the moose anymore. Weird? Because we'd seen it fall, and we knew it had been hit mortally. We get to the location, and the thing is just... gone. My uncle starts to enter the forest and all my hairs suddenly raised on my entire body, and I made a whimper. I'm not a wuss, but I had a bad feeling. My uncle looks at me, annoyed and confused, and just maybe 30 feet away we hear heavy breathing. First thing we think is grizzly, so he pushes me behind himself and gets his gun ready and shouts as loud as he can. I don't know what it was, but it dropped the fucking moose from at least a couple feet off the ground. We know because we heard the loud thud, and tears off running the other direction. It is dark in the understory, so we don't see much. But my uncle decides the thing can have the moose. We weren't about to stick around to find out what could lift a whole moose into the air and carry it. Account 8. Ten years as a USFS forest ranger here. A little late to this party, and not even sure where to start as a decade will leave you with countless stories. But I've nearly seen it all. A couple of my favorites both involve fire patrol during the summer months when we were enforcing fire restrictions. The first was a dude at a beautiful area, camp next to a lake. About 100 feet from his camp was a giant reflective yellow sign that read, No camping or fires within one two mile of the lake. When approached and asked if he'd seen the sign, he admitted that he saw it. Puzzled, I asked why he was camping there and why he had a campfire. He replied that he figured he was one-two from the lake, so he should be fine. I kicked a stone into the water and informed him that he was only about ten feet from the lake, and I was going to need his ID, as I was going to issue him a citation. Another time, also on a late-night fire patrol, we drove past a designated day-use, picnic area. This particular area had fire pits, benches, restrooms, water. It was well-developed. Right outside the picnic area was this old trail that led to a bridge site where the bridge was removed. Due to this, we had placed a carsonite signpost, slender brown fiberglass post for informative stickers, trail markers, warnings. This particular post had stickers on it that said, Area closed, no fires, stay on designated trails, and an American flag at the bottom. We roll up to a raging fire at this site, fire so big and so close to the Carsonite sign, that my stickers are literally bubbling and starting to melt due to the heat. Pretty angrily, I asked who wanted to be responsible for this blatant violation. The oldest guy there says he'll take responsibility for the party, follows me to my truck and proceeds to give me his ID in his police badge holder. He was a local police officer. I was floored. I gave him a stern lecture about reading signage and ultimately damaging government property. Endless stories, though. Suicides, ATV accidents, bear attacks. Very sad. Far too many Boy Scout violations to count. Poachers, murders, public nudity, sex in public, underage everything you can imagine, life flight helicopters, forest fires and air tankers, fire crews. Enough said there. But all in all, I truly miss the million-acre office, the woods, the trees, animal encounters, the occasional well-informed forest visitors, and the endless views, vistas, and sunsets, getting paid to hike, mountain bike, dirt bike, motorcycles, snowmobile, jeep, and play outside for ten years was clearly something I'll never forget. Edit. 
I somehow missed the creepy and unexplainable part of this request. Somehow I thought it was a request for stupid people stories.